beginning of the year was fucking awesome because I got to experience Gears of War for the first time. A bunch of jacked up muscle heads killing a bunch of jacked up lizard monsters. Thank you, Xbox Game Pass. I loved how each game built on the lore, the weapons, and the mechanics. God, in that moment where Don finally reunites with his wife, fucking destroyed me. It's an amazing trilogy, and it's amazing how the game about beefy jacked up marines can still have so much emotional depth. I will forever cherish my time with Delta Squad. I also had a lot of fun with the Star Wars Battlefront 2 campaign, shooting my blaster rifle on Endor, taking down AT-AT walkers, and flying TIE fighters through space was very immersive. I was surprised at the level of care and attention put into the story, and I absolutely loved Eden Versio's character and story. She was a great protagonist with a lot of spirit and heart. She was a bad bitch for sure, and I loved her in Inferno Squad. I hope to see more of her in other Star Wars media. I was able to explore the rich and beautiful world of Days Gone, and I was fully immersed in this open world, biker zombie drama. For two months, I had the time of my life, hunting deers, collecting zombie ears, and upgrading my motorcycle. Everything from its immersive gameplay, leveling system, and compelling story has really enraptured me. Nothing was better than coming home after a long day at work and exploring the Oregon mountains. In March, I finally finished ripping and tearing through Doom Eternal's second DLC, The Ancient Gods Part 2. And though it was a bit short, it was still challenging and rewarding. It's a bombastic and cinematic final act that has us take on the Dark Lord in ritualistic combat. And there's so many standout moments. It's all that I wanted. For a DLC to give me so much, this could be its own little mini game. Rip and tear, and now it is finally done. Resident Evil Village was super fun and one of my favorite games this year. I enjoyed this game so much more than I thought I would, and Ethan proved to be a worthwhile protagonist, and I had such a blast upgrading weapons and fighting all manners of creepy monsters. A mix of survival horror and cinematic action, it feels like RE7 mixed with some of RE4. The atmosphere works, the replay value is nuts, and there are so many reasons to keep coming back to this game over and over again, which I did throughout the year. Being a huge Chris Redfield fan, nothing felt better than leading Wolf Squad into the village and taking on hordes of werewolves. I am very happy he wasn't the bad guy, and I look forward to the next installment. But regardless of all these great games, my favorite this year has to be Metroid Dread. I have waited so long for a new Metroid game, and this one was a fucking surprise. Playing a Samus one more time as I look for all of my suit upgrades while going back and forth a rich alien world was everything I expect and love about the Metroid franchise. I can see people's frustrations with the game's lack of a soundtrack, but as far as issues with the narrative, I personally really enjoyed the Doom 2016 style of storytelling, where the combat is the main focus and the lore and narrative are there if you pay attention. The game really delivers some outstanding cinematics, bosses, and I think they really nailed Samus' characterization in her nuanced performance while looking absolutely badass in all those different suit modifications. Also, like many have mentioned already, it's funny how the Chozo's solution to things getting out of hand is to just blow up the planet, so we can see where Samus gets this. Overall, this game is sleek, it's fun, it looks nice, it plays nice, it's pretty challenging, but if you're a fan of Metroid, it's definitely for you. This is what I wanted all year. It's not for everyone, but it sure as hell was for me.